Cool. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Pavan, and if you've seen my previous videos, you would by now know that uh, I'm trying to create videos for questions that I think could be asked during your interviews, especially on the front end side. I'll be covering breadth of topics, uh, but I'm starting with JavaScript and React, and then I'll move on to some deep code and design questions. For the video today, I'll keep it short. I'm going to do currying. It's a pretty popular concept, can be confusing at times. Uh, but I just wanted to cover the basic implementation of currying. And if somebody asks us during interview, uh, you could use this as a solution. So before I get into solution, I think it's important to understand how does currying work. Uh, so let's assume we have a function called sum, which is taking some arguments and then adding all of them. Now you can wrap this with a higher order function called curry, which gives you a new function called curry sum. What you could use, what you could do with this curry sum now is you can either execute that as a normal function by passing arguments to it, or you can keep currying, which is basically taking the output of the first function and passing it to the second function in the sequential order, uh, depending on number of times it's got curried. So over here, you would take the value from what you would get out of one and then pass it to this second function, and then you would add it. Uh, and similarly, you could also do that with three functions over here and keep passing the value from the previous one to the next one to add it. So let's go about implementing this. So the as I said, it's a higher order function. So the first thing you have to do is return a function, uh, which is taking the arguments. The only difference is we are going to use a named function over here, and I'll go over why, because we are going to use recursion for achieving this functionality. So let's call it in a query and pass arguments. So how do we first find out if it's got currying or not? So you check if the arguments.length is greater or equal to function.length. Uh, it's important to understand what is function.length and arguments.length. Arguments.length is all the arguments that are passed to a function, whereas the function.length are the parameters which are not defined, which are passed to it. You can try that on your console. You will be surprised on the value differentiation between the two. Uh, but for this exercise, the first thing is you check if it's got currying or not. And the way you check that is by checking if the arguments.length is greater or equal to function.length. If that's the case, you just return the function uh, by spreading all the arguments and invoking the function, which is this.args. Right? Now, if this condition does not get met, so now that's when your currying code is going to come into picture. You're going to return a new function over here. Do not use a name function, use a arrow function. So you'll call it args2. And I'll explain why you have to use an arrow function and not a name function. It's because you want to maintain the context from the wrapping function and not create a new context for this inside the function over here. Otherwise, you will have to preserve the context by storing that into a new variable called that and use that when you're applying. And now what do, what do you do over here? As I said, you're going to use recursion. So all you're going to do is you're going to call inner curry, apply, and you're going to pass this. The this over here is the scope of the parent function uh, because we are using arrow functions over here. And you're not going to concatenate the values from the arguments that was passed as part of the inner curry wrapper function and as part of the second function, which is the subsequent subsequent functions, which would get called in the order. And you're just going to do arcs dot concat, which is basically combining with arcs two. Uh, if you want, you can also do a shallow copy by using uh, empty array and then do your concat. But in this case, I'm not doing that. You can just do arcs uh, dot concat dot arcs two. Uh, and let's see if this works. Uh, so there was an error because I had a typo over here. Uh, it's got to be func dot length, fn dot length, and not in function. Let's run it again. Awesome. Cool. So this is cutting for you a pretty simple implementation, but you just need to understand certain things over here on what is function dot length. Uh, what is arguments.length and by how are they two different? And also use recursion. Uh, preserve, use name functions over here to make the recursion possible without having to de define a function outside. 
Uh, and remember to use the arrow functions for the inner function uh, to preserve the context from the parent function. Uh, so that's that's Karim, a pretty simple implementation. Thank you, folks. We'll keep recording. <laughs>